which of these videos is real slow motion and which has half the frames made up through software. In this video, I'm gonna show you all the different ways you can slow down high FPS footage inside of DaVinci Resolve. And we're gonna test all the different methods to make slow motion out of normal footage. Different scenarios, different methods, and different softwares. Let's do it. Yeah, I am Manry, and in this channel, I help with the tech tools to be creative. And this is how we are set up today. Our timeline is at 25 frames per second and all our footage is either 25 or 50 frames per second. So 25 frames per second footage on this timeline will just play normally in real time. And 50 frames per second footage also, because when you throw it in the timeline, the software is gonna already skip every other frame to make you see it in real time. But in this case, if you say that you want half speed, it's just going to take twice as long to show you the same scene. It's super smooth, it looks awesome, but you need to remember to switch to slow motion mode while recording. And also you have to deal with your camera limitations regarding slow motion, like some cameras just change the picture profile, they don't let you record sound at the same time, or there's a heavy cropping factor. So let's say you missed it, the moment is gone, can you still make it slow motion? And the answer is yes, but it depends on the amount and the type of motion you got in the shot. We're gonna use this tram shot as our first example. Now clicking on the clip and coming to the inspector, you can go down to speed change. Let's choose 50% and select ripple so that it expands on the timeline respecting the in and out points we selected before. Now if we play it like this, it's just gonna be choppy because it's making every frame last two frames. So let's go to retime and scaling and we are gonna choose one of these methods. First, retime process. By default, everything comes at project settings. You could set this before you even created the timeline. So if you didn't change anything, it's gonna be nearest. And in this case, it just drops or duplicate frames. It's a very basic and fast method, but very inefficient overall. Okay, so next up is frame blend, and let's slow down the footage using another method. If you press Ctrl or Command and press R, you're gonna see this change in the clip. Now clicking on this arrow, you can select the new speed you want for this, so let's do it 50% again. So let's pick now frame blend, and it tries to blend frames in between each other, which makes it look a bit smoother, but still not really usable. Basically, every other frame is a blurry version of the one before or after, and it's just very distracting. So by now you've understood already that the next one in the list, Optical Flow, is the one that is going to produce the best results, unless the motion is so complex that it's going to create artifacts. So let's slow this clip down using yet another method. Just press R on the keyboard and this dialog box will pop up. Here you can just pick 50% again and choose Ripple so that it expands the clip and press OK. Now just bear in mind that you have to calculate what's the speed percentage that you can use in your case. In mine is 50% because we are at the 25 frames per second timeline and we just want to reduce it to half speed. But whenever you have something like a 60 frames per second footage on a 24 timeline, you would have to do it at 40%. It's a little bit of maths, but you get the point. Now once you test optical flow, you'll be tempted to roll back to frame blend if it doesn't work. But in this case, you have some more options down here. And basically they are ordered from simpler and faster to slower and better. Now I'd roughly say that 50% of the clips that I tried with Enhanced Better worked pretty well, but especially when you're filming a video about faking slow motion, you can't unsee the details after you spot them. And here you can see how it really suffered to create these frames when the tram is passing in front of this wall or in front of this writing. Especially with this rear view mirror or down here. But the reality is that in a real life scenario in which this clip would be mixed with others and just passing really quickly, it would be tough to spot. Now, if you want it almost perfect, you can switch to speed warp faster, or if you're feeling fancy, speed warp better. And now this one is really beautiful. And if you're not pixel peeping and zooming in 200%, it's gonna be very tough to spot. Now, can you slow down any kind of footage? And the reality is that the more linear and predictable the motion is, the better the results. So if it's smooth and slow, perfect. If it's full of camera shake, it's drama. Now some clips actually surprised me, like this crowded shot over here, in which it just managed to estimate the motion pretty well. And how far can you slow it down? 
Basically, in all my tests, whenever you asked it to create one frame in between real frames, it worked pretty well. Meaning that if you have uh, 25 frames per second and you just want to create one frame in between, making it 50 frames per second, perfect. Also, all the footage that was already at 50 and I wanted it slowed down to 25% worked great. Okay, but how can we compare the exact same footage done both ways? And this is what I'm gonna show you in this example here with the seagull. This was shot originally at 50 frames per second. So I threw it in the 25 frames timeline and exported it. So basically now we have also a 25 frames per second version of the same clip. So let's slow both of them down to 50%. I'll put it up on the screen right now and I'll leave you some time to try to figure out which one is real and which one is the fake slow motion. Any ideas? Let's go. Answers in three, two, one. I'd say very good results. The other options apart from speed warp better created some artifacts like double wings or the nose of the seagull being duplicated and this kind of thing. But this one is very difficult to spot which is real and which is the fake one. Now, what if you don't have Da Vinci, you don't wanna get it or you just want an alternative to make more or less the same thing. I've tried it also in other two softwares, Premiere Pro and Topaz Video AI that I knew already you guys would ask me about it in the comments. Premiere Pro got its own version of optical flow and it kind of worked, but generated some artifacts and you don't have the same fine tuning controls that you have in DaVinci. So either it works or it doesn't. Topaz has many more options and just like DaVinci using the more advanced AI models worked much better. Like this Apollo model that worked much better as the Apollo faster model. Now, Premiere or Topaz, you're gonna have to buy this software separately anyways and export the video to be used. So if for any reason you think it's worth it, Topaz probably I could recommend you, but sincerely, I think you can just do everything inside DaVinci and it's a much more complete platform. And this is how you master slow motion inside of DaVinci Resolve. Experiment with these techniques and with your clips to see which ones are gonna produce the best results. And please, like this video to send a message to the YouTube gods that this was helpful. And if this wasn't enough to convince you to switch to DaVinci Resolve, you can try watching this video over here or this one over here. I know I'm sandwiched here in between them, but these are very good videos. And thanks for watching. See you here or here. Ciao.